Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Uh, go ahead and look it up if you want. <laughs> Today we're jumping back into r slash neckbeard stories. God, it is the continuation of the Resist Beard Saga. This has uh, been on hiatus for quite a little while. I received so many messages asking if the Resist Beard OP was okay. She's fine. She hangs out in the Discord. You could you could go talk to her in the voice chat if you want. <laughs> but uh, she did take her time coming out with this one, which is fine. You know, worth the wait, I'm sure. If you have no idea what this saga is, there is a link in the description with the playlist and all that good stuff. You could go check it out and catch yourself up. I'm eager to get into this one, so let's do just that. I should also mention we're live streaming this over on Twitch if you want to come through and see me. We'll get some more plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this r slash neckbeard stories. Uh, cringe. Resist Beard, Chapter 5, The Truth about the tabletop. Oh, you want some truth about tabletop? Okay, well, how about this one? It's the most fun if you have, like, a, a, a good imagination. A theater of your own mind. The ratio of fun increases with your amount of imagination. That's why some people don't like tabletop. Because they can't imagine what orcs and elves and all that other crap looks like. Or whatever tabletop you're playing, I guess. Anyways, <laughs> probably has nothing to do with the story, but that's my truth. My tabletop truthiness. Hello, readers! Red X, Moon Horse, hi, Ada Dism was good with it. <laughs> I've made my triumphant return to finally regale you all with the tales of my time dealing with Resist Beard. Good lord, it's been a while, hasn't it? How many months? Five months. <laughs> I don't think we even had to wait between like stealth beard entries for that long. But like I said, take your time with it. You know, no rush or anything like that. <laughs> but I did have to field a lot of questions. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. Go ask the OP. I don't know what to tell you. First off, I am so sorry for the frustratingly long wait. I went on spring break, forgot about writing this when I got back, and then kept putting it off when I remembered. On top of that, I built a new PC, got addicted to Half-Life Alex, VR Chat, and all the games I could finally play, and then finals came along and studying took priority, and then after that I just, uh, lost motivation for a while. I know, excuses, excuses. Most of the wait was my own fault, and for that, I apologize. I mean, at least you came back at some point. <laughs> There's some OPs that just, like, disappear, dust in the wind. I'm like, hey! Cool, a saga, let's get it started. Well, I regret that now. So, <laughs> uh, take the time you need. I'm sure it's worth the wait, like I said. I can't hold anything against you too hard because, yeah, you did decide to come back. Face the music or whatever. I appreciate you. Also, hey, Red X! I hope things have been going well. I've been on and off watching your channel. I hope your family's doing all right. Yeah, they alive. <laughs> Also, I'm really sorry I kept sliding into your DM saying, hey, chapter will drop tomorrow, and then, lo and behold, I don't post it the next day. I mean, that's fine. I just, <laughs> I, I was quite skeptical, but that's kind of my default mode. I'm like, if it's gonna get posted, then it gets posted. If not, then I guess that's fine, too. I just kept wanting to make edits or small changes to the writing, and it just, uh, got out of hand. I mean, perfectionism is something I don't understand at all. I'm just like, slap it up, see how it does. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. But, um, you know, I have known perfectionists, and yeah, I can I can accept that. Don't sweat it too hard. I hope you weren't offended if I, if I didn't respond to the majority of DMs. But yeah, that's my thought process. If it comes, that's great. If it doesn't, whatever, I'll find something else. <laughs> just gotta keep the show going, you know? My writing might have suffered from the long break that I took, so if my grammar and English have any mistakes, I apologize. Not to mention, all the edits I made might clash. <laughs> See? See what happens with perfectionism? You've overcooked it now. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just playing with you. It is good to be aware uh, of anything that might happen, though. 
This entire chapter feels like a disaster. <laughs> I honestly just want to get it out there because I know if I wait any longer, it'll end up being another month. If the writing is lackluster, I am sorry. Anyways, let's get the Link Storm out of the way. If you haven't read the previous parts of the story, they can be found at user Ada Dism's profile. Alternatively, if you want to listen to the story, narrated by the ahem, amazing Red X, here's a link to his playlist of the series. Oh, amazing, she says. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that's, that's the best thing ever. I'm going to get a big head over here. Honestly, that is the definitive version of the story. Red X's commentary adds so much. If you aren't subscribed to him, what are you even doing? Go subscribe to him! He's an awesome dude! Maybe. Yeah, mostly. Sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> Depends on the day, I guess. Some days I'm a real social butterfly. Other days I'm like, I can't talk to anybody. Bury me in a hole. <laughs> but I always do put on a happy face to, to read the stories out. People don't come on YouTube to get bummed out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Today's actually a pretty good day, though. I mentioned that once the beard storm was over, I would link my socials, namely Twitch and YouTube. Well, the storm is over. So here are my socials. Twitch.tv slash SilverZayev and YouTube.com slash channel. Uh, yeah, that. I think it's the same name, though. <laughs> my content is in a transitional period at the moment, past the robot phase that it was in during the time this story took place and on hiatus while moving towards something greater. Again, don't get too caught up with perfectionism. Content creation, it, it, it moves real fast. If you disappear for a week, people, people forget, you know? <laughs> That's what I'm really neurotic about. I'm like, I gotta post every day or else. But of course, readjusting, re-angling your, your vectors and whatnot, it's absolutely fine. Just uh, pull the trigger as you're able to, I suppose. I'd love it if you drop by or drop to follow, but ultimately all that is your choice. I can't tell you what to do. That's right! Can't tell you how to live your life! <laughs> I am going to add you to the uh, auto-hosting, though, for my channel. I've got a lot of people. Most of the followers that, that hang out in the Twitch chat do get auto-hosted. You should drop by my Twitch channel, too, if you'd like. That would be pretty cool. But again, I, I can't tell you how to live your life. <laughs> I just... Please ask that you don't come specifically for Resist Beard or his friends, because they aren't even there anymore. They are gone. Who, who's going to show up for the neckbeard? Maybe to, like, harass him or some stuff, but like I said in the disclaimer, I don't sign off on any of that. We are not witch hunters around here. We're here to regale some tales and see how people could do things differently, and maybe even to keep yourself safe out there while you're online. And also in real life sometimes, too. My staff and I went through quite a lot to wipe any traces of his greasy self from the community, and it is a touchy subject for most of us. Oh, oh, so don't talk about it at all. Okay. Duly noted. I mean, heck, most of us have moved on. A handful of staff members left the team. The stress from Resist Beard and his friend's harassment weighed down on all of us. It's still an automatic kick for mentioning him. Whoa, wow, spicy. <laughs> Mainly because his friends still occasionally join the Discord via alts and try to harass us further. That's astonishing to me, honestly. I've grown this big and, you know, we've had our fair share of trolls in the Discord and stuff like that, but it's relatively easily dealt with. Maybe you need to step up like the verification settings or something like that, require a phone number to join, then yeah. You have to take a few extra steps to, to get your alt into the Discord for five seconds before we figure out that it's your alt. <laughs> I'll slam them hard! I don't even care! <laughs> but yeah, I guess it is different, you know, uh, being a dude online. If you're a chick online, there's always gonna be some creepers out there. Just keep your head on a swivel, that's the best advice I got. And before I get into the story, I also want to just warn everybody that this is truly where things go off the deep end. The blackmail was only scratching the surface. If you want to nope out, I totally understand. Trigger warnings for this chapter are blackmail and some light transphobia. I mean, you, you can't even call it light. Like, <laughs> it is what it is as far as I'm concerned. There aren't classifications for that kind of thing. It is or it isn't. <laughs> Some light racism, some light assault, 
Yeah, it's just like scrumping for apples. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what possessed me into not getting the hell away from Resistbeard after the events that had already unfolded. Maybe it was some sort of sick curiosity? I really don't know. In hindsight, I really should have just resisted the beard. I mean, you would be well advised to resist the beard, get yourself out of the situation, but like, I also kind of understand if you want to believe the best about people. I've had a, a few quote-unquote friends I met in the Philippines that I, you know, was was loath to cut off, a bit hesitant to get rid of, just because, you know, I, I'd like to have some more friends. But at the end of the day, yeah, I'd rather have no friends than, than shitty friends. <laughs> the cast list! We got OP, Dizzy, Ada, whatever you want to call me. I'm a 20-year-old trans woman standing at about 5 foot 11. Six foot one was wrong, I just measured a week ago. Skinny as a stick, former avid Ingress player, and possibly a little bit too nice. I'm also a content creator and that ties into this story uh, quite heavily. Yeah, y'all remember Ingress? It's kinda like Pokemon Go, it's like the mobile game or some stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know how relevant it's going to be, but it did introduce the beard. Taz is a friend of mine that I've known since high school who works at the same place as I do. There's an inside joke in my friend group that the two of us are dating since we spend so much time hanging out together. We sarcastically play along for kicks and giggles. Is not an Ingress player at this part of the story, but he later does start playing. Again, I ship it. <laughs> I think that's what I've said in the previous episodes, and yeah. If you guys are willing to pretend and play along, there's probably something there. Little bit of spark, right? Let me know how it goes. <laughs> Scissors! One of the three who had taken me under their wing to teach me about streaming. She's a huge Fire Emblem fan, and she used to join me on my Fire Emblem Friday streams. Oh! You, you theme your streams? Stream theme! <laughs> I should probably do that. All of my streams are themed like Reddit narration. <laughs> uh, that's all I got. What do you want? She sent me an FE Three Houses blanket that has seen quite a lot of use during the year that I've had it. The blanket isn't important to the story. I just think it's cool. I apologize for my mini ramble. <laughs> that's fine. You like the thing? That's great. My wife bought me a Pokemon blanket that I think is the tits. So hey, thanks for bringing it up. Let's talk about our favorite blankets in the comments section, if you want. RB is short for uh, Resist Beard. The dreaded beard of this story. Flabby, creepy, checking nearly all the boxes of your common garden variety neck beard. Aside from the fact that he does actually go outside. Yeah, but he only goes outside to play his little video game. Does it really count? I don't think it really counts. <laughs> Resist Beard has been the bane of my existence for about two to three months at this point, and surprisingly, he owns a home. Yes, I own my own home. I got a small loan from my parents of a million dollars. <laughs> okay, listen. What you gotta do is give me some money, okay? Uh, wow. Good for you. Resist Beard's friends, Isaac. Kind of an edgelord sometime, but is, uh, sort of self-aware about it. I'm not sure if the things that seem self-aware were intentional or accidental. If it doesn't seem intentional, then I'm pretty sure he's not as self-aware as you presume he is. <laughs> he played a dark elf rogue with a folk hero background, but subverted it slightly by having their character being reluctant about adventuring. Well, that's at least not the regular ass rogue background. My parents died. I was raised on the streets as an orphan. <laughs> Yeah, okay, super interesting. Great. Jack, I never really got a good reading on Jack. He just seemed to agree with Resist Beard blindly. He played a halfling paladin with a background that I can't recall. Yeah, something something church, something something adventure, something something glory to some deity. Who cares? It's a paladin, okay? <laughs> Allie! was actually quite pleasant and not as beardy as Resist Beard's other friends. Honestly, it seemed like they were just kind of dragged along. In fact, I soon learned the truth about their friendship with Resist Beard. Oh, it's another blackmail situation, huh? 
<laughs> Maybe. I don't want to spoil it or anything. Things were not initially what they seemed. They played a tabaxi ranger with a soldier background who used to be the head guard of a town. Yeah, I guess that seems pretty all right. <laughs> Relatively normal. But what were you playing, OP? What was Resistbeard playing? Uh, we're missing a couple classes. I can't really judge the party composition quite yet. Rogue, Paladin, Ranger? Come on, bro, we need, we need some more heals. <laughs> Anyways, it's time for more. This is section one, A Mask of Innocence. Oh, also relating to the Stealth Beard Saga. That's the first time we really talked about masks. And uh, ever since the Stealth Beard Saga, I've seen masks pop up a whole lot. I think it is a good theory. Some masks are just not as convincing as others. So the last time we saw Resist Beard follow me into a Half-Life 2 deathmatch server and lie to the other players about dating me. <laughs> Cringe. <laughs> uh, you really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? <laughs> You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? <laughs> However, that was nothing compared to the absolute bat crap crazy things that were about to go down at the tabletop that he blackmailed me into joining. Half of it felt like a strange and surreal dream. Now, if you were hoping for a full on tabletop horror story, complete with try hard players and scummy GMs, then uh, you're sort of out of luck. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> Them's my favorite. When you mix up the tabletop and the beard stories. Oh, what a delicious combination. There will be parts that are sort of like that. But truth be told, a lot of the smaller details are suppressed within my memory. Uh, I guess that's all right. You could make it up. I'm not telling you to make it up, but you could. <laughs> Before I had started recounting this, all I wanted was to just forget about it all. I'm extrapolating a lot of information from what I could remember. Rather than using logic and faking sickness, guess what I did? I went ahead and went to that tabletop RPG hosted by Resistbeard. I still don't understand, but uh, I guess we're gonna learn some hard lessons today. <laughs> My God, what a mistake that was. The catalyst for the worst thing that he's ever done. I parked my car at the curb and stepped out, locking the doors. Every fiber of my being was screaming, run away, don't go in, get your ass back in that car and just drive away. Yeah, <laughs> I don't understand why you would go, but I, I guess it is what it is, fingers crossed, etc., etc. It's probably gonna be fine. I, <laughs> I could probably convince myself to go. I'd be like, you know, maybe I'm just building it up in my head or something like that. And then you arrive and you're like, well, that was the worst thing that I ever experienced. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> I did the exact opposite of run, walking up the sidewalk, past the overgrown grass to the door. I gave it a knock. Not a second later, the beard swung it open and immediately I was hit by a putrid stench, like rotting beef and how water smells after sitting in an old power washer for too long. <laughs> that is so specific. Uh, I get the rotting beef. How does water smell after sitting in an old power washer? Moldy? Rusty? <laughs> Not good. <laughs> On top of this, there was an underlying musty and fishy smell. It was so bad that my face mask did hardly anything to stop this odorous assault. I nearly puked right then and there. Honestly, you, you probably should have puked right then and there, OP. That would send a strong message, wouldn't it? I mean, obviously take the face mask off your face for long enough to puke, but then pull it back up and get right back in the car. <laughs> you don't have to explain yourself. Obviously, I, I just threw up on the floor. Resist, beard. Clean it up. Resist, beard. <laughs> uh, I've often wished for the superpower of like projectile vomiting on command. That would be a funny prank. Anyways, Resist Beard says, Hey, hey OP, <laughs> glad you could make it. The beard grabbed my arm, startling me a little, as he began dragging me into the disgusting pigsty that was his home. And on top of all that, he owns this house. L like you don't even care enough to take care of the one nice thing that you own. <laughs> 
at least hire a maid or something. Is it really that difficult? I grabbed his hand and pried it off of me. OP, uh, yeah. Hi, please don't touch me. <laughs> Resist beard. Oh, sorry. Also, he lowered his voice. I'm really sorry about the whole blackmail thing. I, I just, I, I didn't want to lose you. I'm just, you were a good fit for the tabletop. And I've been working for months on it. Yeah, that's as good a reason as any to blackmail another human being, isn't it? I've been working really hard on this tabletop, so you have to come, or I'll attempt to destroy your life. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was forgiven. Don't you worry your pretty little head about it, right? Your greasy little head. <laughs> uh, Resist Beard had gone into a diatribe against his own actions, and it felt rather sincere. Sincere or not, no excuse. Y you're out here being a piece of shit. I don't really care what excuses you have to feed me. <laughs> oh, I just wanted the tabletop to function. Then, then invite me like a human being. Never blackmail me. <laughs> the second you blackmail me, I'm going to snake around and find a way to, to end you. Because you would have done the same thing to me, right? If I didn't do what you said. So yeah, no mercy at this point. The beard seemed like he was owning up to his own actions. That he wanted to just put it all behind us and turn over a new leaf. No. No! <laughs> My dumbass fell for the bait and I loosened up just a little. Man, uh, you can't. You can't! However, I was drawing my line in the sand and making it known if Resist Beard crossed it, he was done. <sighs> he should have been done a long time ago. <laughs> How many last chances does he get exactly? I, I don't know, man. It it's your life, you live it how you wanna, but he wouldn't have made it this far with me. One time is all it takes, twice if I really like you, but third strike, forget about it. <laughs> OP says, last chance. If you do anything like that again, or call me your girlfriend, or in general be a creep towards me, I'm done. Okay? Is that fucking clear? Resist beard. Aye, aye! <laughs> You're not taking this seriously, are you? <laughs> he nodded, giving me an enthusiastic salute before leading me in. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Why are you going around saluting people? Uh, I can't. <laughs> uh, that is so cringe. Were you ever in the military resist beard? Or he just likes to LARP? I know, I know. I shouldn't have given him another chance. And I agree, looking back. See, hindsight is 2020. I'm not going to razz you all that hard because you've sort of accepted your, your misplays and stuff like that. And I do even see it from your side just a little bit. But, ugh, God, it's a rough one to just kind of deal with. <laughs> the carpeted floor was covered in dirty laundry, discarded cans of Sprite, and empty bags of many a snack. How hard is it to throw your shit in the trash can? It's really, it just put like a box in your room. You, you want to know why my computer desk is clean? I have a box right next to the desk. A trash can right there. <laughs> it's so easy. In one corner stood a gigantic box TV, old school. The thing looked at least a decade and a half to like two decades old, and it had a couple of tubes running out of the sloped back. I think it's called a rear projector television. Hooked up to it on the floor was a console with a suspicious yellow stain on it. What's that supposed to be? <laughs> An Xbox, but I couldn't tell if it was a 360 or a 1. Leaned up against the wall, attached to it by some duct tape, right next to a rather large hole. Drywall dust on the floor was a coffee table with two of the legs broken off. <laughs> he just doesn't give a single fuck, does he? He went down to the Goodwill, he's like, I got that coffee table for five bucks. It's a good deal. Like, why not affix some some makeshift legs to it or something. Is it really so difficult? On top of the battered table was a massive collection, or rather a horde, 
of anime figurines. <laughs> I recognize some of the characters, like one dude from Evangelion and a couple of Genshin Impact characters. Uh, like, why don't you buy yourself a nice case? If you're really gonna collect the figurines, why keep them in a house surrounded by trash? This is your way of displaying them among the trash horde? They're probably the only things in his life that he values, even above himself. It's just sad, honestly. I I'm getting depressed just being in this setting. Do you think that he's just like, maybe terraforming his house or something? Evangelion's like a post-apocalyptic hellscape. This is sort of the same thing, except with more depression thrown in, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just take small steps to improve your life every day. Come on! Come on! I think it's so frustrating to me because there was a point in my life that I lived like this. And once you're in the, the mental space to pull yourself out of it, it's not all that hard to pull yourself out of it. It's a series of little things that you do. But I guess I can also understand where he's coming from with uh, not being able to pull himself out of it quite yet. Above us was an off-white popcorn ceiling, strange dark spots of varying sizes dotting the surface. Yeah, that's mildew right there. <laughs> I don't know how or why there is mildew. In the middle of the cesspool sat a large oval-shaped table, papers, a game board with a rather obvious fantasy theme instead of the promised sci-fi adventure, but I just assumed that it was sort of placeholders. Little miniatures, also fantasy, and a couple of open cans of soda. Three others were already seated around it, presumably Resist Beard's friends. I silently sighed in relief that there were actually others here. <laughs> True that. <laughs> this could have been a horrible trap. He hadn't lied about his friends. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, that would have, uh amped up the creep factor quite significantly, okay? But I still think that he needs to clean up his house and his his table full of Genshin Impact characters. Genshin Impact character figurines don't belong on the table. They belong in a jar, <laughs> right? <laughs> What's that in your jar? <laughs> uh, you know what I'm talking about? Uh. <laughs> Resist Beard pulled out one of the two empty chairs for me to sit in before taking his seat in the other. I just stood there, trying not to gag for a brief moment before sitting down, putting my bag down in my lap because there's no way in hell I was putting my stuff on that filthy yellowing carpet. Not to mention there is bound to be mice in this place and I'd rather not accidentally take home a new pet. Mice are good pets though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, only if you do it voluntarily. I quickly made sure that I had my stun gun because I was officially behind enemy lines. All alone and at least having the thing made me feel slightly better. Looking back, I could have just avoided all of this. I should have just left, noped out and pumped the brakes on every last bit of this shit. Resist Beard said, OP. Oh, these are my friends, and your fellow party members for this campaign. Yeah, this obviously fantasy-themed campaign, which you said was sci-fi themed, which means you probably weren't working on it for months, which means you lied to my face as soon as I walked in your house, which means I'm gonna go home. <laughs> as if I even need an excuse to go home. I'll, I'll go home just because I don't want to be here. I think you're creepy. I don't want to know your friends. Goodbye. Confirming that my stun gun was there, I pulled out my water bottle, acting like that was what I had been searching for, clever girl, <laughs> and placed it on the table. Finally, I looked up at the others seated around the table as Resist Beard introduced them. All three of them were varying shades of beardy, judging by their appearances. I just gave a nod, greeting them all. OP, it's nice to meet everyone. I stayed as formal as possible, more out of nervousness than actual politeness. Across the table, Isaac was eyeing me up and down, like he was studying me. Just plain creepy. It made my skin crawl. Isaac. <sighs> Are you trans? Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Why? Uh, what the hell? 
I just sat down. Who starts a conversation like that? <laughs> uh, are you kidding me? At this, Resist Beard began to look me up and down just like Isaac had. OP, why are you <laughs> Isaac? No. <laughs> what? That's a good, like, uh, turnaround from OP. But really, Isaac, what the fuck, bro? Not even bro. I can't bro with somebody like that. <laughs> guy. What are you doing out here, guy? <laughs> OP says, well, I believe you've answered your own question there. I'm not trans, so don't worry. I'm just naturally like this. I use that a lot when people ask if I'm transgender. It tends to work in most situations. However, in this scenario... Oh my god, dude. Are you kidding me? Just accept the answer and move on. That was quite a tactful response, was it not? I don't want to get into it right now, is what she's trying to say. Ah, uh, Isaac narrowed his eyes, tilting his head. My discomfort and fear rose. Nobody was here with me. It was just myself, surrounded by a bunch of people that I didn't know and definitely didn't feel safe around. I had a weapon, yeah, but that didn't change the fact that there were four of them and one of me, Isaac. <sighs> Don't lie to me. Uh, are you a trap? Oh God, dude. This is so horrible. What would make you think that this was okay? <sighs> uh, femb Allie stood up and grabbed Isaac's arm. Allie, bro, stop it. So what if they're trans or a uh, trap? That's not a good word, okay? I don't know if you guys are uh, privy to that. I wasn't privy to that until I think last year, but trap is not a very nice thing to call somebody, okay? She identifies as a woman. She's a woman, <laughs> okay? That's it, end of story. Why is it such a big deal to make somebody else feel comfortable in their own skin? Oh, God. Isaac is even worse than Resist Beard, as far as I'm concerned. Resist Beard was at least, you know, friendly towards OP, not so judgmental. But this guy, fuck, I, I hate him. Can we put him against the wall? <laughs> it doesn't make a difference, Ali continued. They're a friend, and that's that. I mean, I'm non-binary. Do you have a problem with that? Thank goodness for Ali, to be honest. Yeah, you echo my sentiments there. I think without them diffusing this situation, it could have turned out a hell of a lot worse. Resist Beard. In my humble opinion, traps are cute. <laughs> I'd do one. I don't care if it's gay. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. Oh my god. Take me out of this situation. You know what? Take me off of this planet. I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to. Anymore. Just anything anymore. Are you kidding me, dude? Resist Beard leaned over, giving my shoulder a light punch, as if to say, Don't you agree? I instinctively jolted away. You you are making this so much worse, Resist Beard. <laughs> oh my god. He looked a little upset at that, and he should be. Because you don't just touch someone without their permission. Especially after making a comment like that. I was about ready to just up and leave. I don't know why I didn't, Jack. The traps are hot. <laughs> oh, God, dude. Uh, well, at least it's three on two instead of four on one, but this is still not a good situation to be in. I think I'm just going to take my leave. I don't really like myself or my genitals being discussed within like 30 seconds of sitting down, okay? Everyone here is 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 horrible, except for Allie. <laughs> Some crumb of comfort, but not worth sticking around for, honestly. So for those that don't know, trap is a slang term, a derogatory slang term, uh, if I do recall. And this is used to describe a cisgender passing pre-op transgender woman or a uh, cross-dresser. Why are we called traps, you might ask? Because people feel like the fact that we're still biologically male makes physical attraction gay. So they've been trapped 
into being gay. The term was popularized by 4chan, which should tell you just about enough about it. <laughs> it was initially used to describe characters like Astolfo from the Fate series. Do you find it offensive, OP? I, I suppose I should ask you, since you're the one being discussed like a, like a piece of meat. It is more than just discussing genitals. It's like straight up fetish stuff at this point. Uh, and I just sat down. <laughs> oh, this is awful. Resistbeard says, uh, we should begin the session proper. <laughs> uh, does everyone have everything that they need? <laughs> I need, I need a lot. I need, uh, where's my whiskey? <laughs> I honestly had no idea if I had everything. I had my character sheet, a pack of dice from the D&D 5th edition set that I got a few years back, but I never touched because I couldn't find a group, and a notebook. Was that all that I was gonna need? Everyone else just nodded, taking their seats. <laughs> just roll with it, it's gonna be fine. I put my character sheet on the table. Getting started didn't sound like a half bad idea. No, it's a bad idea. <laughs> Going home is the is the good idea here. It's time to leave now. The sooner we got started, the sooner we could finish, and the sooner I could get the hell out of here. Ugh. Maybe it'll be fine. Maybe it's totally gonna be awesome. Always look on the bright side of life. Probably is going to be really weird, though. <laughs> so, you know how Resistbeard said that the tabletop was Ingress-themed? Well, that turned out to be largely a lie. Everyone else had fantasy characters, and the campaign was set in a fantasy world. <laughs> how did my modern-day character show up in this world? A portal. And not the Ingress kind of portal, just a straight-up portal that Megan Goodman was sucked into. She ended up smack dab in the middle of a field with amnesia. That's right, my entire character's backstory was mostly thrown out, just so Resistbeard could shoehorn her into this campaign, which was clearly not even meant for them. <laughs> this is the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> uh, even if everybody here was completely normal, this is the point where I'd walk away, because clearly you haven't planned a goddamn thing out. How did my modern day character get there? Yeah, bro, I don't know, portals. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, luckily, she still had the ability that I had picked out, meaning that I could still attempt to cause as much chaos as I wanted with it, though I didn't get much of an opportunity to use it this session. There was no combat at all. I don't even remember what the ability is. It was five months ago, <laughs> but I guess it doesn't get used, so it doesn't really matter. So how did my character join the party? Simple. She was just found asleep in a field, helped to her feet with a comment about finding a better place to nap than on the ground, and promptly adopted by this ragtag group of adventurers. What if I don't want to go with you? What if we don't even speak the same language? <laughs> Apparently this campaign had already been running for a while, but it had become stale. Resistbeard decided that the best way to spice things up was to introduce a party member from, uh, another dimension. <laughs> this seems like a really weird choice, man. I don't know if I can sign off on any of this. I bet he was trying to figure out how to, like, theme the world as an ingress thing, but he's just not smart enough or creative enough to do it. He's like, eh, it's just Final Fantasy, but you can play an Ingress character. Just you specifically. <laughs> it's so weird. Why had he lied about the tabletop? Hell if I know. While I was a bit miffed, I soon got over it. A fish out of water scenario uh, could be fun. Right? Right? <laughs> Whatever you gotta tell yourself, I guess. I think it sounds like a nightmare, but we'll just have to see how it goes. We don't know about the nightmare until we experience it, right? <laughs> what followed was the most uncomfortable and awkward tabletop game that I have ever played. <laughs> Resistbeard constantly described my character as a gift from the gods. Ugh. 
and kept trying to put her on a figurative pedestal. I mean, the importance was sort of good for getting my character geared up for the adventure that the party was on, but it also just plainly felt creepy. And like Resistbeard was trying to woo me by putting me in the spotlight. I don't like being in the limelight. It makes me feel awkward and like I'm walking on eggshells. I'm scared of accidentally saying something wrong or doing something to upset someone else by accident. I am completely exposed. Luckily, everyone in the party just treated my character like a normal person, save for the whole strange clothes and amnesia thing. Well, I'm glad they treated your character like a normal person. It's too bad they couldn't treat the player behind the character like a normal person. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, the introduction was not great. And I could definitely understand not wanting to be in the spotlight on your first meeting of these people. I do have some social anxiety myself. But I also know that you're a Twitch streamer, so part of you must enjoy it at least a little bit. Right? Right? Maybe that's presumptuous. I don't know. <laughs> that just feels like it's uh, sound logic to me. The only real special treatment was the impromptu shopping spree that we went on. Decking out Megan in a nice hooded cloak and arming them with a short sword. Who who's footing the bill for all this? <laughs> Since the homebrew class Resist Beard had chosen for me at first no longer worked in this setting, he had us start a journey to find some special shrine that could uh, show Megan her true potential. However, we had no idea where to even begin looking. Allie suggested that we try the tavern. Yep, that's where you go. <laughs> and ask around to see if anyone knew anything useful. Isaac just wanted to forget about the shrine and move on with the bigger adventure. Jack was adamant on talking to people in the church because they likely visited the shrine frequently to pay. We went with Allie's idea, but nothing turned up, at least for a while. Isaac did manage to net some gold by winning a drinking contest with an NPC, though. Hooray! <laughs> I love role-playing being drunk. Fake alcohol's my favorite. <laughs> At one point, Resistbeard got up and retrieved a Tupperware container full of SpaghettiOs from the fridge. <laughs> Cold SpaghettiOs. You animal! <laughs> what is happening right now? Is that a SpaghettiO? Oh! He never said a word about it, just got up and left us all in an awkward silence as he began to repeatedly reheat and stir the meal in the microwave for a couple of minutes. I, I guess heating it up is good, but now it smells like SpaghettiOs on top of mildew and, and rotten meat and... Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> terrible. This is terrible. We all just sort of sat there. Should we wait? Talk among ourselves? <laughs> Nobody spoke up. You just role play, okay? Role play amongst yourselves. At least instruct the table. God, I knew Resist Beard was gonna be a terrible GM, but to just be like, oh, I'm gonna go get SpaghettiOs and assume that everything's just gonna pause nicely. <laughs> You're an idiot. When he finally returned to the table, meal in hand, he apologizes. Resist Beard, eh, most sincere of apologies. I I just got hungry. <laughs> it's already dinner time anyways. Yeah, make sure you don't make anything for the guests in your home. Just heat up your own disgusting SpaghettiOs. <laughs> you remember back when we had the, the Butter Elemental who cooked up a tray of chicken tendies? I think it was a Ramtide story. And he used like two sticks of butter and made soggy chicken tendies. Like, even that is better than j just doing nothing, right? <laughs> uh, just like at the date, the rotund beard ate messily. The mass-produced pasta sauce went from container to spoon to face to fingers to dice and miniatures to little spots on the table and the board. <laughs> I'm getting some Sir Sam vibes right now. <laughs> Disgusting. Day turned to night and the party remained in the tavern. It was then that we finally got the clue that we needed, and yet another attempt to push Megan further into the limelight. Please stop doing it. I'm not even having fun. This is just weird. <laughs> yeah. 
I get it. She's a new member of the party that appeared by strange means. You don't have to make her the friggin' star of the show! We overheard some robed figures talking about how they couldn't stand the cult that they were in. <laughs> A-plus dialogue. <laughs> Very subtle. <laughs> Man, I hate this cult that we're in. Oh, what do you mean the cult to summon this demon that's going to end the whole world? Yeah. <laughs> Can you exposition any harder? <laughs> Uh, they were talking about how things were going too far. Summoning gateways to other worlds and sealing deities away in those that are forcefully brought to this world. Everyone else put two and two together. I mean, that's so obvious, isn't it? <laughs> There's no subtlety involved here. <laughs> and they realized that Megan was one of those people with a deity sealed inside of them. Oh. How fortunate. <laughs> Can't I just play a normal character with nothing divine or special about them? I was promised Ingress, not this Isekai stuff. <laughs> I don't know why this happened. Oh yeah, I do, because you didn't leave. You gotta immediately leave, or else this this is the kind of stuff that happens. The cultists mentioned visiting some prayer stone out in the nearby forest, and off we went through some magical navigation thing or a spell, I can't really remember, we managed to locate it. Was that traveled through roots or something like that? It's a ranger spell? I can't remember how that works. <laughs> Time to figure out what class technician translates to. I put my hand upon the stone and Megan was a wizard. Ah oh, yes, the most technical of classes. <laughs> uh, this is dumb. This whole thing is dumb. You got shoehorned into the wizard class. It's not even... Technician's more artificial, isn't it? Fiddle with crossbows, make some firebomb. Why wizard? Then a voice spoke out to her. Resistbeard tried to do a deep bellowing godly voice, but it honestly just sounded more like he had terrible indigestion. You, you have got well uh, to reawaken me. Uh. I shall lend you my power. And that was it. <laughs> the session abruptly ended, oh mercifully, as if Resistbeard hadn't finished writing the story yet. I don't even care. I just want to go home. I've wanted to go home this whole time and now I get to go home. So good. <laughs> Beautiful. I don't remember much of what happened next. Just that Resistbeard offered to let me stay over for the night, to which I replied, No! <laughs> How about hell no? How about fuck no? Before making a beeline for the door and abruptly leaving. Allie stopped me at my car, apologizing for Isaac. According to them, he was just, uh, stuck in his ways. And has an extremely conservative family. He's trying to be more open-minded, though. Well, good for him. Do it somewhere else. I, I don't want to be involved with you, honestly. This is the level of understanding that I get? Fuck out of here. <laughs> OP just says it's fine. I'm used to it. it. It's not fine, and you shouldn't be used to it. But I just hopped in my car as I nodded, thanking Allie for de-escalating the situation back there, which was an MVP play, by the way. Section 2 is Respite and Sunlight. Respite and Sunlight? I, it's, I think it's supposed to rhyme. <laughs> a little less than a week passed, and Thanksgiving was the coming Thursday. My family was going out of town, and I would have the house to myself. I know it made no sense with COVID, but my family insisted that since they were going to stay in a hotel and mask up, that it would be fine. <laughs> Old people, am I right? <laughs> I kind of wanted to go with them to see my extended family, but ever since I came out as trans... They kind of just pretend that I no longer exist when it came to family affairs such as this. Oof. I kind of wonder what they say when people ask about where I was. It was saddening, yeah, but I still had Taz's family, and they welcomed me with open arms, no matter my gender or orientation. As long as I wasn't doing drugs or getting involved with crime, I was cool to them. Honestly, bless them all. I mean, you could do drugs. I, I don't even care. Don't do crime. <laughs> I guess drugs, some drugs are a crime. I don't know what I'm getting at. 
What is drugs? Tuesday night, I was chatting it up with Scissors about Fire Emblem and how much I was enjoying Three Houses as I made myself dinner and a cup of tea. Eventually, we just started singing the main theme, The Edge of Dawn, myself butchering the lyrics as usual. I never usually got the opportunity to sing outside of my room. Whenever my family was home, my younger brother would always get upset and start yelling at me to stop. Annoying. <laughs> Nobody was safe from his strict sound policing. I mean, what's even the point of policing the sound? Are you recording or something? I yell at my kids to shut up while I'm recording, but that's about the only time. Any other time they got free reign. <laughs> Not even my sister, who honestly had the vocal range to make a potential career out of singing. She's going into theater arts though, so who knows. I forgot I mentioned this sound policing thing in chapter three, but uh, I'm just gonna leave it in here because why not? Yeah, because I, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> My phone rumbled on the countertop and I moved to check whatever notification I had received. Now, here's a fun multiple choice question. Was the notification for A, a new Red X video just dropping, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> B, My family texting me, C, Resist Beard messaging me, or D, My work sending me a happy Thanksgiving email. Hmm, take a minute, think about that for just a moment. I wish it was a new Red X video, but unfortunately I do think that it's C. That's how we keep the narrative moving, right? Now, <laughs> if you guess C, then yes, you'd be right. It was Resist Beard messaging me about Tabletop tomorrow night. My reply was simply just, yay, time to see what happens next. And then I pulled out a handgun and held it in my mouth. <laughs> You tell me what happens next. No, she didn't do that. <laughs> but honestly, you should text the back and be like, yeah, I'm not interested. I, I learned my lesson the first time around, didn't I? Or uh, maybe not. <laughs> I just sighed in frustration. I was sort of excited. Mm, if only to see where the story went next. Not at all about going back into the dirty beard nest with its all-encompassing miasma of stale coom, stinky water, and shattered aspirations. <laughs> Not to mention that feeling of danger that I had just being there. Okay, y you know that the, the feeling in your stomach <laughs> that's telling you to get the hell out? You, you, sh you should listen to that, all right? First impression, we were already there one time and I, I can't abide this again. It was like things could go horribly wrong at any second. Resist Beard did seem like he was at least trying to better himself somewhat though. Uh, that's what I thought at least. Scissors and I eventually hopped into a voice call. I set my laptop on the island in the middle of the kitchen. Our conversation soon turned to the topic of Foldland knights storing soup in their helmets. <laughs> the inside joke we started about knights doing exactly that on a recent Fire Emblem Friday stream actually had us seriously debating whether or not it was actually feasible to store soup and bread in a secret compartment of the helmet. A little battlefield snack to keep them going. I mean, logistically, sure, but why not just carry around a thermos? <laughs> I don't think the helmet's the place you want to keep it. You're like, oh my god, they hit me in the head, I'm bleeding everywhere. Oh, it's tomato soup. <laughs> Somebody come over here and lick my face. <laughs> uh, the next day, I awoke to a text from my boss, telling me that everyone had the day off. The screen printer machine had broken down. One of the pneumatic tubes that moved the pallets had a hole in it. Whoopie doop. So just nobody gets paid today? Uh, how about, you know, day off and also pay? Then I'll be happy. Just day off? Yeah, you're fucking with my cash because of your own problem. <laughs> I don't sign off on that. I spent the day at the same park Mars and I had played Ingress with Resist Beard at. It was a surprisingly nice day. Perfect hoodie weather. There's a nice spot that overlooks the nearby city just across the river. I sat on a bench for hours, earbuds in, listening to music, just staring at the town that I lived so close to yet barely knew. My eyes wandered the skyline, gaze gliding over the many buildings, coming to a stop on the huge ballpark. I think it was the ballpark, at least. Could have been a football stadium? I don't really know, because I hardly keep up with sports. <laughs> Anyways, I'll uh, 
quit my rambling for now. Nothing all too offensive happened in this chapter. I mean, sorta. <laughs> Honestly, the first session seemed like Resistbeard was trying to get back on my good side. My empathetic and forgiving self just easily fell for it, as annoyed and suspicious of him as I was. Next chapter will be session two, as well as Thanksgiving, and the disasters that unfolded during the last Fire Emblem Friday. Scissors and I literally quit that tradition thanks to Resist Beard. All I can really say is, eh, sometimes you lose. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> but sometimes you win, so you gotta keep playing. Anyways, Dizzy, out. Remember, don't pineapple your portals, but do eat a pineapple, because uh, fruits is good for you. Well, all I can really say about Resist Beard and his friend group is, uh, birds of a feather. I don't know why I expected this to be decent. I guess it didn't go as bad as it could have, but is that really the bar that we're gonna set? <laughs> hey, I went to the D&D &D session and wasn't physically assaulted, so that's a win. No, that's the, the bare minimum that I would expect from any human. I wouldn't have gone back for the second session. I have no idea why we're going back for the second session, but, uh... I suppose we shall see about that chapter when it comes. Thank you guys for listening to this one. Guys, it's been a long time coming, hasn't it? But um, it, it was pretty delicious, yes. I hope that you guys will like, comment, and or subscribe. Maybe share the video around if you should like. That's a pretty big brain play. Got all kinds of stuff down in the description. Plugs, playlist, podcast, Spotify, iTunes, Teespring, Amazon affiliate, etc., etc. Uh, also, my social medias. Like I said, live streaming this on Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Facebook. We've also got my channel members, my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I would like to thank them Jerry, Jerry much, as I do every episode. So uh, thank you too. Billy D, Robert Waits, Carrie Sepulveda, Brandon Ashcraft, John Indoors, Phantom Danica, Train Boy, Liquor Lush Loser, Or Gaming Steve, Skyla May, The Gypsy Barber, Fire Drake, Samantha, Death's Flagship, Bearded Snake, Buy Two, Get One Hand. Oh my god, we are growing in the in the YouTube members department. If you'd like to join them, do click that join button down there. And then we'll uh, go ahead, head off into a Patreon. I'll tell you all about those beautiful people. We got... Dark Luscious, Holly Holy, Robert Waits, Camille Sarah, Chase from Blue Kraken, Roxanne Wolf Cemetery, Conrad Inge, Captain Clown Jerry, dot dot dot, <laughs> ellipses, <laughs> uh, Aaron Jerry, Esteban, for all the things sign, make Dayton cry, fine, oh, God. <laughs> uh, it's been a success already, Michael Shambles, or gave me Steve Bean Tom with a bag of marbles without devil, Jerry Bigfoot forgiveness, Silo Revolver, PCB, Fluxer, the Jerry of Industry, the original Jerry, Jerry, Ravencraft, Kick Jerry, Destiny Piper, Jerry, Shitsune, Salty Wizard, 211 Jerry, the two Jerry's, a very tired Jerry, a Justy Dargonian Jerry, and Frankenberry, ain't that a hiding pitch though? <laughs> a sense of fun Jerry, Aurora Wildheart, Baby Jerry, Bailey Joy, Peter Jerry, Benji and the Jets, Bill Dubik, Pitch Brown, the Blade Hero, Little Jerry, Bronze Dragon, Catholic Jerry, Commander J Tank, Dennis Dayton, Dr. Larks, Aaron Aaron, East Bars, Frozen Never Studio, Gento at the Doodles, uh, Commission's Open. Hey, Dream BR, I'm Slim Jerry, yes, I'm the real Jerry, all you want the Slim Jerry's is just imitating Inquisitor Jerry, Irish Pirate, Iron Allo, <laughs> Iranian Jerry, JM Coon, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Outlaw, Mother Trucker, Jerry Mile was a bullfrog, John Hero, Crowey, Cuddly Kraken, Lady in Awakening, Legitimate Girth, Miss Monday, Lord Jerry, Luke of X was a bullfrog, he was a good friend of mine, <laughs> never just did a single thing he said, but I helped him drink his wine, <laughs> like and subscribe, hey, the Lady Dicks, Malama Man, Melgar the Destroyer, Metal Factor, Necromancer, Nix, Needless King 89, Paragon Soul, Faith of the Pines, Jerry, Kinsley, Jerry Beth, Queens, Quay, Lucy, Quiet Myers, Ram Tide, Lacrimates, Rose, Jerry Miller, Sarita the Lolita, Saucy Octopus, Sa, Scarlet Kevin, Sergeant K Cop, Bringer of the Law, Silo Whip, Stephanie Gunder, Sign After Coom, Stick, Brilliant Tomago, Tabby, Double Blue, The Gypsy Barber, The Italian Greyhound Dino, The Little Sue, The Wardrobe Fuzzy, Try to Find Marble to Get Back to the Real World, uh, You Probably Don't Want to Blow Into That Balloon Knot, It's Sticky Balloon, <laughs> Vanguard Angel, Victor Cordero, Viking Jerry, Void the Comet Destroyer, Wiki Tech, Zephyr Gargoyle or Clay, Void Set Collector of Cringe, Comrade Mooney, Kira, Not Another Jerry, But He Is Though, Cage Alex Nine, Red Wind, Non Viper, Saint Blessing, Third Stuff, Venom Jerry, Wasabi Jerry, Jace Christensen, One Leg Jerry, The Neck Beard Hunter, A Norman Jerry, Holds Up A Giant Bag of Popcorn, Broadway Oak Stacks, And I'll Share, Admiral T Tank, Amber Alder, Another Stupid Hipster, Comic Jerry Zilla, Bartender Kelia, Big Dad Wolf, Blueberry Double Pie, Broken Spine Horse Radish, Cake Jerry, California Jerry Girl, Shepherd Seven Lock, Chicago Panda, Coy Desert, uh, Sometimes, Cow <laughs> Cow Bunga Cody, Crypt Titties, Stefan Jerry, Deftune, Dopamine Dane, Jerry is Dwarfy Dude, Ghost of Lava, He Cannot, Janitor Jerry is roaming the streets of Finland, hunting down the Rudo Headband, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Gerald of Arabia, Jerry and Thomas is Happy New Year's, Where Apocalypse, Jerry, but with two S's and an E, said Jesse, <laughs> Jesse Pinkman, <laughs> Jerry Springer, the results are in, you are not the neckbeard, ah yeah, uh, Jerry the Sunday Baka, Jerry's mom's got it going on, Jerry Aldo Romero, Jerry Rockstars, Jerry Role Playing Game, Keaton Tales, Carrie Sepulveda, Kid Marvelous, Defender of the Innocent, Enemy to the Bearded, Enemy to Bro, Kids Kid, Lucia Lovecraft, Machia Cini, maybe next time you'll forget Miss Duchess, not a Angel, Raptor, Art, Seldom Dark, She's by Jerry Pie, Sky Mara Ravenswood, Snary, that's Nom Jerry, Spoonie the Rogue, Spoopy Scabby, Jerry John, Techno Dubs, the original Jerry, but he's not though, <laughs> there are two wolves inside me, Spit Roasted Jerry, <laughs> Do Infinite Jerry and Beyond, Took Care of Snowbeard, Send him back to Boof Chris Trucker, oh god, not the Love Dumpster, no, <laughs> Unkale, Throws two liter Mountain Dew, Grow my neck beard, grow, it's Jerry time, Hold Red X Morpher, Hygiene, it's Jerry time, Hold Red X Morpher, Humility, Dilf Jerry, and thank you to my beautiful $1 patrons as well. Bless up all the Jerry's and not Jerry's alike, yes indeed. <laughs> Thank you guys for supporting. If you can afford to join these lovely people in supporting, that's huge, you know? But if you can't afford to do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you'll come on back and
<laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye.